Hi, I'm Amanda Beard, seven-time medalist. I get my aquasphere gear at swimoutlet.com, the web's most popular swim shop. Check them out today. This is the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, October 5th, 2011. I'm your host, Peter Bush, and the Phoenix Monitor today will talk to actor Ted McGinley. Many of you probably don't know this, but he played collegiate water polo for USC and was pretty darn good. Ted McGinley joins us right now on the Phoenix Monitor from Pacific Palisades, California. Ted, oh, if they didn't believe me now, now they know. You're a water polo player at heart. How you doing? <laughs> That's right. Everywhere I go, I take my hat with me. Yeah. On every show I've ever been on, they had to ask me to take it off. <laughs> so you played water polo. A lot of people you know know you as an actor, married with children, a lot of other TV shows and movies. But water polo, going way back at USC, huh? Yeah, that's right. I grew up in Newport Beach, California. I played under Bill Barnett, who was the Olympic coach. Um, and then we had, he would trade off his team in the summertime. We would work out with UCI. And uh, that was Ed Newland, and he was the other uh, Olympic coach from the previous year. So we had a really good program there. And um, I was fortunate enough, I got a scholarship to USC and, and played water polo there. And, um, you know, it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. You know, you're doing a campaign right now with USA Water Polo, and you called it the greatest experience of your life. And that, that's saying something, given everything that you've accomplished. Well, that's nice. You know what's funny for me is that I, I really enjoy when uh, somebody, when I run into people from my water polo life because it's so long ago and it's so forgotten. And, you know, you establish yourself as a, uh, you have different characteristics as an athlete that sort of follow you through your life and, uh, or certainly through your athletic life. And in my uh, acting business, not a single person knows that I was even, I mean, they knew I was athletic, but they didn't know what my sport, you know, they could care less. And so it's, I really enjoy it when I run into um, someone who I knew from those days or somebody who remembers that I played. It, it means a lot to me. And to be asked to uh, help USA Water Polo, I was just, you know, so excited because, uh, again, you just feel like that part of you is, is not around anymore and it was really exciting for me. Anything about a sports background that makes you a better actor? Well, uh, you know, water polo is that kind of sport where you have uh, two days just about every day of your life and uh, you learn discipline and you learn showing up when you don't want to be there. You know, you learn that uh, there's a job to be done and it has to be done and you signed up for it for so let's go you know, and you owe it to the team. And I think that there's an amount of discipline that you get from a sport like that that um, really helps uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Number two is uh, pressure, uh, being under pressure all the time, uh, being able to deal with pressure, um, competing. I think all of that stuff really, especially in my business now, because I'm going into an audition and there's you know, there's uh, sometimes there's 400 guys, sometimes there's 20 guys, all, you know, movie stars or people that you know, and you're like, wow, I'm never going to get this. And I don't usually get it. <laughs> but the truth is, you just, uh, you have to get used to the competition, and I like that part of it. It doesn't bother me in the least. And, and uh, you just have to get up, get knocked down, next day start it all over again. I believe all of those life lessons come from sport. What are a couple of the best shows on TV today, in your opinion? Uh, I think Modern Family is a great, innovative new show. I love Ed O'Neill on that show. I love that he broke out of being uh, Al Bundy. Uh, it's funny. I love shows like um, Survivor Man, uh, Locked Up. I find those sort of shows fascinating. I like that reality TV. It's put me out of work, but I do enjoy it. Um, as far as scripted television goes, uh, you know, I really don't know. I don't, I don't watch that much, uh, yeah, but I do. Because of the Ed O'Neill connection, you might say Modern Family, but it's a legitimate answer. That might be the funniest show on TV right now. I think it's innovative. I think it's funny. I think it's clever. It's edgy. It's, it's fun to watch, you know, it's, and it's, 
it's not too in your face. I just think it's a great show. It's very well written. Um, we lot, at my house, we watch a lot of Survivor. Uh, my kids will watch that. And my wife and I, uh, we like The Biggest Loser. Uh, I think that The Biggest Loser on a weird level is one of the finest programs in, in maybe the history of television because it's changed people's lives. There are people, there are millions of people watching the show who are trying to change their life because of a because of a silly television show. And not only are you watching the transformation of the people on the show, which is basically a miracle if you watch them from beginning to end, but there are people at home who are being affected greatly. And I think that that's uh, television at its finest, sort of like the internet when you, when you see what's happening around the world with the information flow going out to people who have been locked away and can't because of the you know, mountainous regions or whatever it is, they haven't been able to get any information and because of the internet and, and uh, cell phones and whatnot, that kind of technology, people can now find out what's happening in their own country even though they're, they're uh, landlocked or, uh, you know, for whatever reason can't get any information. Are TV shows better today than they were in the past or is it, you know, like comparing athletes from different eras, you know, they may be quote unquote better but it's all relative to your time? Yeah, TV shows are different. I think that there was a classic era of television. Uh, you know, if, if you ask Carl Reiner, uh, Rob Reiner's father, and uh, he was a brilliant writer, actor, comedian, uh, he would probably tell you that it's much worse today, <clears throat> I'm guessing, than in the golden years of Milton Berle and, Rob, and Carl Reiner. Uh, but for example, on Happy Days, our director was a man named Jerry Paris. Jerry Paris was the director of the Dick Van Dyke show and also was the next door neighbor, the, the dentist, Jerry the dentist. And you know, he helped form a lot of what happened on Happy Days. And so you've seen these, the, all of those progressions have, somebody has sort of helped them along and then helped them along to the next level and that's why you want to keep seeing it progress and go forward and uh, I do think if you look at one hour television there's no way Th those are the best shows uh, I mean the production values of Hawaii 5 today compared to Hawaii 5 uh, years ago is night and day it, they're amazing and, and uh, it's all because of technology and and I think that the stories are based off of what you see in the newspaper on a day to day basis a lot of one hour programs so I do think that yes I, I believe that there uh, I'm not a uh, purist or uh, I like to see progression. I like to see change in television. And I do think because of technology, it's better. And a lot of the one hour shows are basically a movie. They basically shoot a movie every eight days. And that's a miracle. Uh, and, you know, nowadays, instead of using film, like in the old, when I first started on Happy Days, it was film. And so they were shooting film and they, you couldn't see what you were shooting. So the cameraman would say, well, I think I got it. And they'd have to do it a few times because they never were quite sure. Now they have a monitor. The director has a monitor. The camera operator has a monitor. He can see exactly what he's shooting. So they know if they have it or not. And then it goes right into a microchip. And they can just make the editing, you know, in, in moments. It's pretty spectacular. So I would say, it's, I would say the, the opportunity today to make a better TV show is certainly there. The, the writing is writing. I think writing was brilliant then and it's... It's often today you look at uh, Aaron Sorkin, who did West Wing, is a modern day genius. I think J.J. Abrams and uh, Aaron Sorkin are two real geniuses. You might come across their work and you're like, why is this so different? It's because they're geniuses. And there aren't a lot of those guys around, but they're out there. What if Sorkin would have been the one to write Revenge of the Nerds? <laughs> more, hell of an interesting script. Well, I'll tell you how it would have been different. With Aaron Sorkin, you can't change a single word. You don't change an if, an and, or a the. Uh, but when we did Revenge of the Nerds, we literally, because we would hang out together in the trailers, and everybody would hang out there, and you would come up with bits. And guys would, like Timothy Busfield was constantly, like every 10 seconds, coming up with a bit. And about 90% of them were bad. But 10% 10, 10 were genius. 
And uh, I should say 98% of them were bad and 2% were genius. And those were the, so we'd go to the director and we'd say, hey, how about if we do this? And uh, a lot of that stuff was just stuff we came up with on the spot or in the trailer in between. I mean, we did a lot of improvisation. And that whole speech where we kick, where, we, where I'm talking to the guys before we go into the house and kick them out, that's all. I just made that up. Um, Will you let your kids see Revenge of the Nerds? <laughs> Never. <laughs> it's funny, my kids really could care less. Um, I mean, they enjoy seeing stuff every so often, but they're so busy. And uh, if it weren't for their friends telling them that we were, my wife is an actor as well, she's an actress. Uh, Gigi Rice, she was on the Joan Larroquette show and, and Delta. She's done a lot of different shows along the way. But she is, uh, she is like me. We don't talk about it that much around the house. And so uh, unless their friends come over and say, oh, I saw you on you know, Wizards of Waverly Place, they would never know. You ever uh, get back in the pool, swim, or play water polo? That's a good question. I'll tell you something that's kind of interesting. It, my sons play soccer, volleyball, and baseball, football, pretty much everything but in the pool. And, you know, as you know, that swimming is a, it's a choice. And when you make that choice, it's, it's, uh, it's two days for the rest of your life. So for me, I wanted to make sure that if they wanted to do it, it was their choice. And we spent a lot of time in the ocean, uh, but they never really spent time in the pool. Uh, a little bit. My oldest one is a natural. I swear he came out of the came out of the womb. I used to hold him in the in the jacuzzi all the time as a baby, and he was egg beatering. And I he's a natural egg beater. He's a natural in the water. My old my youngest one is more of a land guy, but he decided to play to play soccer. And uh, when we travel around to Irvine and we go to these areas where they have a 50 meter pool on literally almost every corner. Uh, you can get pool time, you can get anything you want. Up here in the Palisades, we have one pool. And uh, we had a YMCA pool that was really not very good and uh, very disappointing. Anyway, about two years ago, a teacher from Pacific Palisades High School donated uh, over a million dollars to have a pool built uh, on campus, a new one. So we just have a brand new pool. We started a water polo program for the first time here. Uh, and I keep thinking, okay, I'm going to get out there. My problem is that I don't like circle pattern. I will do anything to swim when I can get my own lane or swim opposite one other person, but I can't stand circle pattern. I hated it when I was swimming, and I, and I hate it to this day. So the answer, the long-winded answer is I don't get in very much. I still don't like cold water, uh, but I'll do it. Now I'm getting to the point where I talked to a buddy of mine who I grew up with who was a football player the other day and he's been getting up every day at 5 a.m. to swim and I said I, I can't believe you're doing that and I've been I've been thinking about it every day since because I keep thinking I should get my my ass out there never too late I know how about you do you swim no I uh, I got little kids it's too tough to find the time I jog and lift a little weights but uh, yeah but yeah I, I well, don't swim I, too I much anymore. a runner after I quit swimming Big time. I ran a few marathons. I mean, I really enjoyed it because it worked with my work schedule. I could actually go sometimes out at lunchtime or, you know, whatever. I was able to do it kind of whenever. And swimming, as you know, you got to get the hours right or you can't get in. So, and people always come over to the house. We have a pool at my house. And people always say, well, do, well, you must work out in your pool. All <laughs> People don't realize if you're a swimmer, you do a flip turn in a regular pool, you're done. Before you get to the other side, you're flip turning again. So you, get, you, can't, you can't really do that, I guess, unless you hook up a, one of those deals to your back and you just swim. But I still love it. I, I'm, I love what it does for you. I think it's the best exercise in the world. I think swimming and yoga are the two best exercises yeah. in the world. I totally agree. I'm, I feel great whenever I do get in the pool. It's just tough to get to the pool right. and um, get it done. But Hey, so right. you've got an audition coming up, you said, right? No. Oh, I thought... My bad. I thought you. Had I wish. Audition. I was going to say good luck, but I'm sure you'll have another one soon. So. <laughs> well, I will have one coming up soon, but not in the next hour or so. Well, great talking to you. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts about acting and water polo, and uh, we all know a little bit more about Ted McGinley now. Thanks. Thank you. I'm very proud to have been asked to be here. It's uh, an honor, honestly. Thank you. All right. Take care. That's Ted Thanks McGinley joining us in the Phoenix Monitor today from California.
That's it for today's show. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.